This was shot handheld. I'm gonna show you how to go from this to this. Okay, so I have DaVinci Resolve 18 Studio opened up here. And what we're gonna do first is we're going to mask out the background. And to do that, we're gonna come down to our magic mask tool here. And we'll click on that. And then we're gonna come over to quality here and set it to better. And again, there's many different ways you can mask in DaVinci Resolve. This is the easiest way I have found to mask somebody out. Okay, so then I'm gonna come over to this part of my monitor menu. I'm gonna click down on it and make sure that the qualifier tool is selected. All right, so now we're just gonna draw a rough outline here. And again, we don't have to make it be perfect. We're just trying to tell the AI what to detect to mask out. And then I'm gonna come up to my tab up here and hit the highlight key to just isolate the node. And we can see what's been done. Okay, so we don't want this to be in our shot here. So let's go ahead and just X that out. And what I'm doing here to X that out, by the way, is I'm using the negative qualifier tool here. And then let's go ahead and track backwards and forwards. So we'll just click that. Okay, so right off the bat, I'm really liking this a lot. Uh, I'm just gonna make one small adjustment here. So as you can see, if we come in really close here, we can see some ghosting going on here. So to get rid of that ghosting, we're just going to, I'm down here in the magic mask menu on the into out ratio. And I'm just gonna click this and hold the mouse and turn it down. And voila, ghosting is gone. Okay, so the next thing I'll do is I'll unisolate our mask. Okay, and then I'll go to the start of our clip here. And then I'm gonna right click and hit grab still. And then I'm gonna come over to our gallery. And in our gallery, I'm gonna right click on this and hit export. And we'll export this as JPEG. So I'll just put girl, girl sitting. And just make sure you export it as a JPEG. And we'll hit export. Okay, so now I'm in Adobe Photoshop 2025 here. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to replace the background and we're gonna use generative fill to do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to select our subject here as well as the couch. So to do that, to start off, I'm just gonna hit select subject. Okay, and then we wanna expand this across the couch here. So to do that, I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna click on our quick selection tool and we'll go ahead and move our selection across the couch here and across this way as well. So then I'm gonna go up to select and I'm gonna hit inverse. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit generative fill here. So you can get really creative with these backgrounds here. I'm gonna try and keep this as simple as possible. So I'm just gonna type in apartment loft and see what that comes up with. And you might have to do this several times to get the iteration you want. Okay, so I'm liking that background. So the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna come down to our layer window. We're going to hit this unlock button here and we're gonna right click and we're gonna hit duplicate layer. And I'm gonna hit okay. And then I'm gonna select these two layers together and let's go ahead and merge them. So I'm gonna right click and hit merge layers. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we wanna remove the foreground. Okay, so to do that, we're just gonna do a very rough selection here. So I'm gonna come up to my lasso tool and we'll just do a rough selection. Again, we don't want to fine tune the selection. We just want to go roughly around it and make sure that we're not leaving out any hair particles or any couch parts, none of that stuff. Now, the next thing we'll do is we'll come down to generative fill and then we'll type in remove. Okay, so we'll keep it on that one. I'm not going to see all this junk they have here in the foreground here when we put, when we composite this in. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this image. So we'll go up to file and we'll go to export and we'll go to export as, and we'll save it as a JPEG and hit export. And we'll just call this kitchen. Okay, so now we're back in DaVinci Resolve 18 Studio. And the next thing we wanna do is we wanna track our original background. So to do that, we're gonna right click in our node area here, hit add node, hit add corrector. And then we're gonna go to our library search and type in move. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and drag and drop our match move onto our new node here. Okay, and then we want to make sure that OpenFX here is selected on our monitor. And then we're going to track some points here. So let's go ahead and track this point here and this point down here. And let's make sure that we enable rotation because the camera does rotate as it shakes a little bit. And then let's go ahead and track forward. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come up to our media pool window here. And let's go ahead and hit command, command I or control I if you're on a PC. Okay, and then we'll import our kitchen picture in that we generated. Okay, and then I'm going to drag this over to our node window. Okay, and the next, right where this little green square is, we're going to take that green square and we're going to connect it up with this green triangle here. And then we'll select our tracker node again. And under output, we'll select the drop down and go to composite. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to turn these nodes into layers and combine them together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click in my node window, go to add node, and then go to layer mixer. So the way it works is kind of different than it would be in other programs. So the most bottom layer is the layer that is at the forefront. And then the one on the top is the layer that's in the background. So we want to take this green square here and we want to drag it down to our arrow down here. And we want to take this square here and drag it to this upper rectangle. And then we'll go ahead and connect this to our output. Okay, so we're going to make some refinements here. Okay, so we're going to come back to our tracking mask here. And for show controls, we're going to make sure it's selected to positioning. Okay, then we'll go ahead and select our output to composite. And let's go ahead and stretch this out a little bit. So again, it doesn't have to be perfect because the background's kind of blurred out. It just has to look naturalistic is kind of what we're going for here. And let's go ahead. I want to just blur out the background a little bit more than it is right now. So we'll go to um, lens blur here, drag and drop it on. So under blur size, we'll go ahead and just crank it down a little bit here. So that's at zero. Let's crank it up to about, about three. And let's just toggle this on and off. Okay. It's not a huge difference, but just subtle enough, we'll turn this down maybe to, we'll try like 2.5. Okay, so pretty subtle, but I think it makes a difference. So there you have it. That is how you replace a background when the camera is moving in DaVinci Resolve.